Hi, once again, welcome to the Functional Medicine Center of Boise. My name is Dr. Spencer Zimmerman. Today, I wanna to talk about a topic that's a little bit different than many people may think of. You may say, hey, you know what? You care about the gut, you care about the brain, and you care about other stuff, right? But why should we care about the mouth, right? You're not a dentist, you're not an orthodontist, you don't deal with cleaning people's teeth, doing cavities, or anything like that. But the mouth and the bacteria that live there and that ecosystem is actually a crucial part of your health. Now, there's a research article that I posted on this um, a little while ago on the Facebook page, but it was talking about dental health and depression. Did you know that poor dental health can give you depression? And I want to talk about why. Okay, so once again, right, my great drawings, we've got someone, actually I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a frowny face because they've got depression, they've got poor hygiene and everything else. So as you're looking at their gums, their gums are showing, they're receding, they're bleeding easily, they're showing signs of periodontal infection. Now, that infection is not just gonna stay there in their mouth. It's actually going to enter into the bloodstream and it's going to happen to go into the gut. So now before we talk about depression, um, there are people who have what's called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is what happens when bacteria enter into the small intestine. Typically, small intestine should not have much bacteria. It really should be the large intestine. Um, as things go down in the stomach, that should be killed. We'll talk more about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, otherwise known as SIBO in another video. But for right now, um, due to whatever reasons, now with depression, for example, or else with this, let's say your stomach acid is not what it should be. And so instead of it killing the bacteria, in the way it should, now it comes down here into your gut and that ends up creating inflammation. Okay, once again, inflammation within the body equals brain inflammation. I apologize if you can't see everything on the board as the red's not coming out as good as I hoped it would. But once again, remember, periodontal infections ends up in the gut, creates inflammation within the gut, impacts our gut barriers, creates inflammation within the body, body inflammation equals brain inflammation, brain inflammation equals decreased firing of neurons, which are the brain cells, which ultimately leads to depression. So whenever you look at the research and you're really looking hard and fast at what is the underlying issue with depression, okay? Um, people argue it's inflammation, it's one thing or it's the other. Ultimately, at its core, inflammation is decreased firing within the brain. Now, if you wanna be general on this, it's within the right frontal cortex is where it's decreased because um, this is a part that's being impacted in these people. Now, that's not always true, and an exam should really be used to determine that. But at its core, once again, depression is decreased firing within the brain. Now, as you may have seen with research, probiotics can decrease um, depression because it helps reduce the inflammation. Some of the anti-inflammatories help reduce it because once again, body inflammation drives brain inflammation. Brain inflammation ultimately impacts the firing of the brain neurons, which leads to depression. If there's any topics you'd like me to cover in a future video, feel free to comment and I'll try to make those videos as I can.